relationships that happened this past weekend all in figure out how I did on my picks. So first up, we've got the New England Patriots versus the New York Jets. This is a game where I predicted the Patriots to come out on top. Uh, very foolish of me <laughs> to go with my own team. Jets come out and play their best football so far this year. The Patriots probably their worst. Um, definitely their worst, actually. The Patriots lose this game 3-24. to Aaron Rodgers puts on a vintage performance. The Patriots offense completely neutralized in the running game, unable to start the run. And then after that, forced the right to catch up, and they just could not. Uh, dominant victory by the Jets here. They move to 2-1. and one. The Patriots fall to 1-2. and two. Then, we've got a matchup between the Giants and the Browns. Uh, despite my prediction, the Giants actually end up winning this game, getting their first victory of the season, climbing to 1-2 and two with a 20-15 victory over the Browns. The Browns fall to 1-2 and two. Uh, in this one. The key factor being the Browns' O-line, allowing 8 sacks to Deshaun Watson. Uh, the Giants playing a pretty good game of football. Malik Neighbors with yet another impressive day. Daniel Jones doing uh, a good job. Then we've got the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles matching up with the 2-0 Saints. The Saints putting up 40 plus in their first two weeks. The Eagles, uh, good first week, bad second week. The, most people were expecting the Saints to win this game. I went with my gut and picked the Eagles for a victory, and surprisingly, it did pan out in my favor. The Eagles win this one 15-12 on a late touchdown by Saquon Barkley, uh, and then a two-point attempt from him as well. Eagles climbed 2-1, Saints fall 2-1 in a defensive battle. Uh, then we've got the Texans and the Vikings. The Texans getting absolutely demolished in this game by the Vikings, losing 34-7 didn't see that coming. Obviously, Vikings impressed in weeks one and two. I had yet to pick a game where they would win, and my disrespect has piled on, and they have answered each time, so it's time to take the Vikings more seriously. Sam Darnold has been phenomenal to start the season. Texans, you know, had a bad game. Two turnovers, two interceptions thrown by uh, CJ Stroud, but Joe Mixon also out. I'm not too worried for them. The Vikings, on the other hand, they're looking like a top five football team. Uh, very good on offense and even better on defense. So yeah. Then we've got a shocking victory by the Broncos over the Buccaneers, winning this one 26 to seven. Early turnovers by the Buccaneers allowed the Broncos to lay it on. I think they scored an opening drive touchdown, then scored another to go up like 14-0 and then just made it hard for the Buccaneers to catch up. I believe the Buccaneers O-line allowed Mayfield to get sacked seven times in this one. Uh, not ideal at all. The Broncos, on the other hand, Bo Nix was both your leading passer and your leading rusher, so developing more as the weeks progress. Uh, very impressed by his running ability so far, and he gets his first win as a Bronco. Then you've got the Packers and the Titans in a Malik Willis revenge game. The Packers win this one 30 to 14. Uh, Willis also the leading rusher and the leading passer. Doing the best he can keep, keep this Packers team afloat in Jordan Love's absence. Uh, and he's doing a phenomenal job so far, 2-0 in his starts. The Titans on the other hand, another very mistake prone game. You've got uh, two interceptions by Will Levis yet again. Diab has a much better game, but they really could not run the ball at all, and the Packers could run anywhere they felt like. So, yeah. Then you've got the Bears and the Colts facing off in a turnover fest. Uh, Caleb Williams plays his best game thus far, throwing for over 300 yards and two touchdowns, but also two interceptions. Uh, Roman Duns has his breakout game with, like, I think it was eight catches per 100-something yards in a score, uh, whereas the Colts... Anthony Richardson looking bad, you know, just not that good as a passer. Uh, I think he went 10 of 20 on his passing attempts, also threw a pick. He has not been as impressive. Um, still working through his rookie pains, really. As is Caleb Williams, still making errant throws, errant judgment. Um, so the Colts get a victory here, but still a lot to figure out offensively. Jonathan Naylor has a great day, and for the Bears, better, but still not great. Then you've got a matchup between the Chargers and the Steelers, where the Steelers win 20-10 to 10 to take a 
3-0 lead uh, in the division. And then the Chargers, they fall to 2-1. Uh, Justin Herbert goes down in the second quarter. And yeah, from then on, the Chargers were unable to do anything on offense, minus five yards of offense in the second half. The Steelers playing run-heavy football with, you know, as limited mistakes as possible. Great defense. And yeah, that's the key to success for both of these teams, really. But the Chargers losing their quarterback is going to significantly hinder them. Then the Dolphins, speaking of, you know, not having a quarterback, they start Skylar Thompson in the absence of Tua Tungabailoa. They cannot do anything on offense today in the passing game. He finishes with over, sorry, less than 100 yards of passing. The Seahawks win this one 24-3. Zach Charbonnet is still filling in for Kenneth Walker, but he has an impressive day. DK with also a pretty solid day again. I think four catches, over 100 yards, and a score. Seahawks uh, climbing to 3-0 to take first place or be sole possessor of first place in that NFC West. Uh, then you've got, in a game that I predicted the outcome, but many were not expecting, you've got the Panthers toppling the Raiders 36-22, to uh, just because Andy Dalton maybe, you know, uh, plug him in there, all of a sudden the Panthers' offense is viable. They go for over 450 yards of offense, uh, including 300 passing. The Raiders, not that shabby of a game. I think they just got smacked in the mouth and didn't know how to respond which is ideally what I had expected. Uh, Andy Dalton showing that maybe Bryce Young is the... And like, he, he didn't make Bryce Young look good. Obviously, the Panthers will line out up way better than usual, but uh, if you're able to score 36 points just by switching your quarterback out, then I don't see Bryce Young starting again anytime soon until Andy Dalton gets hurt or something like that. Raiders, on the other hand, um, volatile season in place for them. Then you've got the 49ers blowing a lead due to the Rams in the fourth quarter. 49ers led by a decent amount. The Rams came out of nowhere to steal it back, winning 27-24. to Very good day from Brock Purdy and Juwan Jennings. Obviously a short-handed 49ers team. No Christian McCaffrey, no George Kittle, no Debo Samuel. But uh, the Rams also facing a lot of injuries to their wide receiver group with no Cooper Cup and no Bukunakua. So... Uh, both teams battling with offensive injuries. The 49ers had a good lead, and then just their offense was stopped when it mattered most. Uh, the Rams turned it on in the fourth quarter, and they end up winning off of a brutal penalty by the 49ers to put the, the Rams in field goal range and allow them to kick the game-winning field goal. Jake Modi also misses a like 54-yarder to give the Rams the 49ers like a significant lead, probably put the game away. Uh, and that was the difference there. 49ers fall to 1-2. and two. Rams rise to 1-2. and two. Not a very good start to the season for the 49ers, who are coming off of a Super Bowl loss. Then you've got the Lions versus the Cardinals uh, in a game where not too high scoring. Lions end up winning 20-13 to 13, uh, in this game. I think both teams did decently well. I'm trying to remember what were difficulties for the Cardinals. Let's actually take a peek at this one. Um, oh, rushing, rushing the ball. The Cardinals were outgained on the ground, 187 to 77, being the main difference here. Uh, both teams one turnover. The Lions actually having more sacks allowed and more penalties, but the Cardinals unable to convert on third down, going 1 of 9 and going 0 of 2 on fourth down. That is why they end up losing this game. Cardinals fall to 1 and 2. Lions climb to 2 and 1. Then you've got the Ravens barely holding off a crazy comeback attempt by the Cowboys. Through three quarters, the Ravens lead 28 to 3. And then the Cowboys score 19, sorry, 28 to 6. And then the Cowboys score 19 points in the fourth quarter to make it very competitive and close. But ultimately, the Cowboys fall short, losing. 25 to 28. Both teams are at 1 and 2 after 3 weeks. Um, Lamar plays pretty efficiently. Derrick Henry has a monster game. Uh, helps them win it. It really was the ground game that helped the Ravens decimate the Cowboys in the first half. Uh, yeah, the Ravens gaining 274 rushing yards to the 51 of the Cowboys. Then you've got Sunday Night Football between the Chiefs and the Falcons. Uh, in a 
pretty close game. Chiefs walk away with a victory 22 to 17. Both teams with their fair share of mistakes. Um, and I think it was the wrong, what was it actually? Our running game was 46 yards in favor of the Chiefs. The biggest difference was also third down and fourth down. Falcons go two of nine and one of three on fourth down, whereas the Chiefs go six of 14 on third down and one of one on fourth down. Both teams also have a turnover, but the Falcons line two sacks. That is what kept them from winning this one. And then Monday night, we've got a doubleheader between the Jaguars and the Bills and the Commanders and the Bengals. Jaguars Bills is a blowout victory to the Bills. They start 3 0, uh, winning 47 to 10 against the Jaguars, who fall to 0 and 3. Um, Josh Allen, the leading MVP candidate so far through three weeks. I can't really believe it. They're using the Lamar Jackson strategy where you have no impressive weapons. Yes your wideouts and somehow uh, you're winning games. Like, I truly thought that this would hinder Josh Allen, but ins instead he is just so great that he is able to win despite that. And I truly think if he keeps this up, that MVP is all his. Leading rusher, leading passer, four touchdowns for Josh Allen in this game. Jaguars fall to 0-3, uh, sloppy start to the season. Truly speaking, like, this is not good. Uh, not good at all. On one hand, you are playing three playoff teams from last season, but at the same time, you have to beat playoff teams to make the playoffs. So, I guess, uh, unless you're the Dolphins, but this is not good for the Jaguars. Uh, definitely some panic arising as they fall to 0-3. Uh, yep. And finally, you've got the Commanders versus the Bengals, probably one of the best games on this year. Offensively, defensively, uh, it wasn't there. It didn't exist. First game since like 1940 that has no punts or turnovers, just pure offense. Commanders end up winning this game 38 to 33, handing the Bengals their third straight loss. Bengals fall to 0 and 3, uh, three games back from the Steelers in their division, and Commanders starting the season 2 and 1 to be tied for the lead of the NFC East with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, truly remarkable performance from Jaden Daniels, like, let us not gloss over this 21 of 23 passing for over 250 yards, uh, two touchdowns, it's not often that you have as many incompletions as touchdowns, that is always a very impressive stat, and usually most quarterbacks will see that once, maybe twice in their career, Jaden Daniels gets that in his third ever NFL start, truly impressive. Uh, I think it's between him and Malik Neighbors for the Offensive Rookie of the Year through three weeks. Uh, that race is going to be exciting to watch. The Commanders, you know, turning a lot of heads. I will say my head has been turned. Uh, <laughs> I was discounting them. Um, eventually, I did think that the Giants would do worse than them, but I, I was expecting like a third place finish for this team. And through three weeks, their offense keeps getting better. This is this is scary. <laughs> this is, obviously, their defense is a big question mark. You're not going to be able to win a lot of games allowing no punts, no turnovers, things like that. Offense did a phenomenal job in this week, so we've seen their offensive ceiling. Uh, now, defensively, let's just tighten up. <laughs> and for the Bengals, your offense did almost everything it could. Your defense did nothing. It really comes down to the field goals. You settled for a couple field goals, which the commanders did not, and that lost you the game. The defense is a issue here. Um, offense, obviously, in week one looked really bad, and now you look much better with the return of D against Jamar Chase having his first big game. But 0-3 start. Of the 0-3 teams, I do have the most faith in the Bengals to actually climb back in the playoff picture, but being three games of the Steelers already is a tough look, so you're gonna have to make it as a wildcard team, probably the very last wildcard spot, but I think they maybe can still do it. And yeah, with that, we recap everything, all the action from week three of the NFL. Uh, sorry that this one was so hyper-focused and quick. I 
just recorded, recorded like an hour long version of this and I moved my recording screen from my laptop to my monitor and for some reason that completely reset all the video footage and I lost all of it so I am trying to get this out tonight I don't have the full hour to do all of that again I also feel like uh, a little bit bad at the moment I think I'm dealing with a sinus infection I've just got a lot of pressure around my eye and my nose and a little bit on my teeth only on the left side, right side of my face feels fine. So I'm going to try and get something to deal with that since I just moved in and I don't have anything in my apartment with me at the moment. But yeah, not to worry. First day of school is tomorrow, so that'll be interesting. My first day of senior year, uh, last year of college. You know, it goes by kind of quick. But other than that, I am hoping to get this video out Wednesday night. Uh, you can expect a Thursday predictions video probably coming out Friday night, I give it another day, uh, and then Sunday night, I'm going to try my best to get a Thursday through all of Sunday recap video going and out, and yeah, it's not going to include Monday night, I just can't really factor that in, considering everything, and then on Tuesday, I'm hoping to do the fantasy football recap, and I want that to kind of be my, like, weekly base, three videos a week, uh, one gonna be Sunday night, one gonna be Tuesday night, and then the predictions either being Thursday night or Friday night, uh, and, yeah, I'm hoping to get into that routine starting this week. As far as this past week, I apologize for my my misplay, my fumble. I was supposed to upload a NBA jersey review video Sunday night. I had extra time before I left up for the Bay Area for one of my friend's birthdays. Uh, and so I thought, let me record a video, schedule it to be posted. Uh, I recorded the video, I got all the editing done, and then I scheduled it before I left. And so Sunday night it came out. But then Monday night I realized I posted the wrong version, the completely unedited version. So it's just an hour of me talking with audio but no visuals and I truly apologize for that uh, have to be I mean I was in a big rush so I didn't notice until way later but not my intended goal I've re-uploaded it since but if you're interested in seeing what the NBA uniforms are the, the new city edition jerseys you can go check out that video uh, but yeah that is all thank you for watching if you enjoy content like this feel free to like comment or subscribe I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks progress and yeah Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.